Hey guys, welcome back to the Emoji Podcast with your host Ro here. Today I have a very, very, very special guest. Um, she's a fitness motivation, well for me personally, she has a fitness motivational page. She's also a huge Selena Gomez fan. Please welcome Mariah. I'm still eating. Hi. <laughs> I like that. I'm still eating. Sorry. I was, like walking down while you were doing the intro, trying to eat as fast as I could. Oh no, it's it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's a great start though. <laughs> oh. What sandwich are you having, by the way? <laughs> what sandwich are you having, by the way? Out of curiosity. Oh, nice. Peanut yes. butter jelly time. <laughs> yes. That's all I. That's all I eat every oh. every day. I eat like two of them a day. It's oh wow! So, it's so bad. Well, because I can't afford anything else. Oh, so, oh okay. Oh, all is I it? Eat. Is it just because? Is it? Um, oh, are you have you, you got a a job or? No, I lost my job due to COVID. Ah, damn. Yeah, okay. a, lot, a lot of people having that, but yeah, but stick at it. <laughs> Mm. I'm, okay, go ahead and ask your questions because okay. I'm, I'm looking so funky. Like, <laughs> it's, a, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, it's all it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Mariah, I brought you here today to just to discuss, um, as you know, the U.S. elections or the elections in America are literally next week. They're literally yeah. on the third of November next week, I... and. First of all, I wanted to ask you, uh, have you voted, of course? <laughs> um, my ballot should be completely in within the next few days. Um, I had to do an absentee ballot from Florida to Illinois. So it's it's taken a little bit, but yes, it is. It, I'm, I have voted and I'm really excited. Very good. That's all we like to hear. Um, I've just been trying to get people to vote because I can't vote um, because of course I don't live in America, which sucks. And I'm like, oh no. So I'm like, vote, vote, please vote, 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 vote. vote. I think that's so awesome coming from you, knowing that like it doesn't necessarily affect you as much as it affects us. So the fact that you're being so... You're, you're putting your heart into something knowing that many of others are being affected is so important and that means a lot as well. Mm, yeah, and I think it's because I have like a lot of friends and family there so that's why it kind of means a lot, the whole landscape of the whole election and you know what happens after this is really critical because of course there's going to be change and you know whoever wins it's going to have a huge impact on the whole of the country in other words because america's like a a big country you know yes and it's scary because if one wins a lot of hatred comes out and i feel like that hatred for the mean side of people was completely diminished until this person was elected because this person he promotes hatred and he promotes racism bigotry Mm. and just awful awful things so these people when they see that their leader is like this that's when their true colors come out Mm -hmm. so um i'm scared of who's going to be elected um but just know that if you voted for him we won't forget that after this is over Mm. like the hatred is still there and we'll always I will always remember what you voted for and who you stood behind and who you didn't care about because you were so selfish about those the minorities in your life sorry I don't know if that made sense yeah yeah no I totally like uh, get what you mean because of you know said president um or you know of said person that has promoted um a lot of hate in america because i've never seen like the country being so divided as it is now 
because you know there's a lot of things happening with uh, the police brutality that I think is is still going on for quite a while. Uh, the hatred of racism, the hatred of you know of color, of division, of politics, everything, um, everything that you can possibly think of is now you know being put into play and is just destroying you know America as a whole and. I think this is why this election is really, really critical to yeah. get the right decision and then to get the right people in and then to get, you know, America moving again. Because this is, it's not going to be a quick fix, I don't think, but it's going to, you know, be at least one step towards the road to a longer recovery. And obviously now with the high, high unemployment rates and the people living in poverty, it will be like, you know, a, a huge boost to see you know, whoever wins, of course. I, and, okay, so and that's the pro, okay, so I guess I'm going to relate this to something one of my friends have said. When Amy Coney Barrett got elected into the Supreme Court, um, us people in the LGBT community were, were, were scared right now. We are absolutely petrified. We are very fearful for our rights. And I was talking to one of my friends about it and I was like, I'm really scared, what do you think? And she said, well, it just kind of seems like a lot of people aren't really against gay marriage anymore. And I was like, okay, but they, they're they coming out more and more as we continue to elect these people who are against it. So these people who were hidden behind the scenes that weren't talking about any of this are now talking about it and now are promoting this hatred and that's why this election is very crucial and why we need to elect i understand that that doesn't get rid of the people who are homophobic or racist they'll just go back into hiding and i think that that's what we need because by this hatred being outspoken it's being um, that's what's kind of dividing us. Although I don't think that, I think that these people need to educate themselves, mm -hmm. but I don't think that they ever will. I don't think that they care enough because it doesn't affect them. They don't care about us as individuals. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of one of those things is if you can't be nice, just be quiet. And they aren't being quiet because this president and the people he is electing is very vocal about their hatred. Mm. So I just, it's unacceptable. And I can't even believe that there are people who are racist or homophobic or sexist. Mm. I, and I can't believe that I'm even saying like, just hide it better because you're just, you're hurting others in the process, mm -hmm. but no one's being quiet. I, I can't, I, I don't know how to like say what I'm trying to say because like it sounds so bad because um, I guess no matter what we do we're not going to be able to stop anybody that feels the way that they do but I think the vocalization of the way that they feel or their hatred is what's dividing us because we all just want equality and we just like on our end, we love everybody for who they are, regardless of their background, their culture, their race, um, who they're interested in. Whereas I think that these people wanna, they're, they're white men or really weird white women that just, for some reason. Mm. And I think that's like really, you know, bad in that case. And I kind of want to touch about this, um, this, Obviously, there's this thing of, you know, a lot of people, I feel, that are in power that just need to go, they need to leave. So there's like a lot of, like, I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to try and be discriminative or, or racist in any sort of way. But a lot of like, like white men um, who are using their views or their power to uh, promote um, division, to promote racism to prevent homophobicism homophobic behavior um you know to stir hate and just create a place where there are just two sides or multiple sides that are fighting and just creating you know 
unnecessary unnecessary drama just need to go and you need to have people who believe in the future of America that's one uh two believe in an equal America for everyone and three just to look at the topics that American people you know like us and like everyone else truly care about because we're at a stage now where things are becoming so 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 dire that I've never seen such um a huge like appeal I've never seen so many votes in an American election for a very long time which should show you the importance of this um election um wouldn't you agree Oh yeah, I've been I've been really keeping up to date and I under, with the polls. I understand that you can't necessarily always believe in the polls. Um obviously the last election was what kind of told us that, but I've been keeping up to date with the polls and whereas Hillary had a 3 point lead over Trump last time, Biden has a 7 point lead and like I said, still go vote if no matter what if you're watching this go vote no matter what make it real make it real so we don't have to go through this again but um it's really it's really looking good for Biden and I'm already fe- I already feel that this country is going to it's going to start going more left um if this makes sense um the republicans are going to start going a little more left because no offense but a lot of republicans are old and they're just going to start dying like they are a lot of people that have those very conservative values are starting to go because yeah. they're much older so i feel like republicans are going to go a little more on the left and then the democrats are going to go more over to like to the far left so i feel oh, like it's going to be kind of right leaning leaning democrats versus very 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 left democrats yes. mm-hmm. so i feel like that's where our country's going to start to go after this i don't i don't see these hardcore conservatives going into office anymore no. i don't see anything yeah and i kind of you know agree with that because i think i saw a post on twitter just saying what the what the balance was in play right at the minute and i can't echo your words enough like do vote because may, even with the, like a seven point lead it's actually great but at the same time it can be very uh, risky and in that sense because you know even with all these uh, lead points it can just turn like when it comes to election day you, like a lot, I know a lot of Americans are going in uh, to vote on the day, so it can just switch in a matter of minutes like that, and it can, you know, make it more more nervous for both sides. I think that the way that they go with the um, with the um, why can't I think of the words with the polls. I think that what they're doing is they go by what we are registered as. And there are some states that allow you to register the day of. Um, So I think that they're going based off of whether a person is registered a Democrat or registered a Republican. And I think that that's how they're basing their polls. I'm not entirely sure where they get all of the information that they do, because if they can't see what people are voting, I don't see how they would have accurate polling information. So um, I guess, yeah, we're gonna have to see, but a lot of Republicans have lost their respect for Trump because he really let this country down. He really, even even, even the people who are hardcore conservative, they're really upset with the way that he's handled COVID. It, the fact that he said, I take full responsibility, but it's not my fault. I don't understand. Okay. Um, I, I'm i very up to date with this, and it just makes no sense to me um, how he how he could say, I'm, I fully take blame, but it's not my fault. He knew way ahead of time, and he should have dealt with it right then and there. 
he was saying it was going to end by Easter. What? It's November and it's starting to rise up again. The cases are rising again. It's like so, a, yeah, it's like a second wave because uh, beginning of January, he said that this this case is not uh, it's not not real. It was just a little virus. Uh, January, February he said no. Cor- he, he he didn't even say it was called the coronavirus. <laughs> Do you know what he said? It's well, apparently called the the virus that comes from you know a different country. It co- comes from China or something. Uh, so he kept calling it that, and I was like, uh, really? <laughs> and it went to March didn't do anything and then cases started rising and then obviously as you said said it's not my fault from it was my my responsibility it's to it's not my fault and then you know it's just been a really bad mess of howling to deal with like covid and stuff and i think it's nice to talk about the presidential debate because this was quite this was quite <laughs> fun to watch <laughs> <laughs> I feel. I mean, I mean, I watched all of them, and the first one was Biden trying to say, "Well, we really want to make America and black," and then Trump just kept interrupting, and it was like, "Shut up!" <laughs> um, yes, I agree. I could not believe that he just. He. The point of it was he didn't want Biden to get a word in. He didn't mm. want any real policies to be heard because Trump doesn't have anything. He doesn't have a single thing. His he's He says that there's a plan for everything, but there's no plan for anything that he said that there was a plan for. Um, I was watching him talk about his, um, his new updated healthcare plan, but he, there was no plan. He just basically said, you are protected. And then the, uh, that was that and says it's better than Obamacare. And he said, this has been in works and he's been, and it's coming out in two weeks. It's coming out within the next week. And he's been saying that for four years. Mm. So I'm just a little confused as to what is coming. Um, And if it's going to come, I don't think it will Mm. come by the time. Maybe, maybe, because they wanted to push Amy Coney any Amy Coney Barrett and I think that that was a scare tactic because they wanted more conservatives in the Supreme Court because I think that they're about to lose the Senate and the presidency so the Supreme Court can kind of hold everything down and that's why I think that that's why um they elected her because they know they they lost the election and Democrats are going to take over Congress. Yeah. The because it's speaking. it's just looking more and more like likely by the minute. And I think he didn't really like. I remember he was talking about um, obviously his health plan, like uh, you know unemployment, and it just it didn't make any sense. Like with the Biden, you could see more of a a future, more of a logical plan. So like. For example, regarding healthcare, he would be like, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. With unemployment, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. With poverty, uh, they know people being homeless, or even with food poverty as well, as that's really important right now, He's gonna, he said we're going to do X, Y, and Z. So you can see with the two, you know, two opposition parties, there's one that has no vision or has no idea of like, what they're talking about or not talking about it logically and you have the other one that's talking about it logically but has a plan um something about like one year two year three year four year that's what real progression is moving a country forward not saying like oh we've got this thing one week later we've got it all three months later we've got it all where is it (laughs) that's what we're all wondering um so yeah i i agree and i I in no way think that Biden is perfect. I don't think any person coming in is perfect to run the country. I think that there are flaws in everything, um, in every single plan. And I know that, but Biden actually has a plan. And yes, you can, you can kind of tweak those things when you go in to actually make this happen. And that's completely fine. And I also love the idea that when Trump was saying something about how um, you are just gonna follow what all of the Democrats are gonna say, you're just doing what AOC wants you to do, you're just doing mm. like what 
Kamala wants you to do. And he's like, I'm running for president. It's me. I am running for president, Joe Biden. I'm not following them. I'm doing what I want to do. And I mm. loved that. I love yeah. that because it does, it seems like, it seems like a lot of this is very run by a bigger person than even Joe. Um, I, it feels like that in both parties that there's someone that's kind of controlling everything in the background. Um, I do think that it was kind of a mutual decision. And I think that um, with, regarding who is going to actually run the Democratic um, nomination to go against Trump, I do think that there was a decision there. But I do think that I, I, I have a feeling that Bernie and Elizabeth Warren said, no, I'm not going to do that. And I think Elizabeth obviously dropped out after she knew she yeah, wasn't going to be and then Bernie, I think Bernie was like, if Elizabeth would have dropped out a day earlier or a few days earlier, I think Bernie would have held it. Um, but I think there was a mutual decision that the Democratic Party all came together with and had said that Joe is the one that could beat Trump. Joe is the most likely to beat Trump. And that's because he's going to be bringing in a majority of the Obama voters because Obama mm -hmm. was such a well-respected president. I understand that he is, again, he's also not a perfect president. I understand that he's not as great as we all once believed he was because we've all learned. We were all younger when we loved Obama, but he he had good, he had good intentions and a good heart. Um, I think that um, we need to follow through and go with, the next best thing and I think that Joe I, I don't think Joe is a bad person I don't I think that he's gone through an immense amount of trauma and loss and pain that I don't think a lot of people could go through to lose a son and then to have another son going through hardcore addiction mm -hmm. that's I my mother was it, it was an alcoholic and she's recovered but to know to, to go through that is very hard and it takes a lot off of you. Yeah. Um, and so he's gone through so much. So like when people are saying, oh, he sniffs kids and he, um, he kisses kids. I think that it's more of like an embracement because mm -hmm. he, he loved his kids so much and he, he obviously lost one. And I think that he has so much love for children and I don't think it's anything weird. I just don't, I think that he just doesn't really know how to contain it. And I, yeah, that's sometimes. To, to, but, yeah, cause it, mm. it comes off weird, but I don't, th I think it's just, a. he's just, he's embracing children because he loves them so much and because he's lost one of his own. Mm. Um, I think that that's where that's coming from. Um, again, I can't, I can't say that that's his full intention because I don't know what's going through his head. But mm. um, I, at least I hope that's what it is. I think, I, I think I agree with you. And I think with like, um, with Joe, even though like, you know, with all the losses he's gone through and the, you know, the traumatic incidents, like it reminds me of abandonment when I got like abandoned by like uh, one of my, you know, like mothers at the age of two. And basically, you know, abandonment and you know all these events that go on in your life is what makes someone stronger i believe because it just gives them more strength if that makes sense because it just tells them that i've been through this, this so this will be not like a breeze but it'll be a challenge but i will pass it but what i like about biden is that He's been there before because obviously, as you said with Obama, he was like the vice president to Obama. Like, and at one point, because we all loved Obama, they were like best friends. <laughs> they were, they still, still are. And they were like besties just playing golf and stuff like that. I mean, just like, it, it, was, quite, it was quite chill. And even like, I think they shot a few videos and they were just like showing, you know, showing love to each other. And it was, it was actually really, really sweet and kind hearted to see. Yeah, I, I just loved it. And I think that's where people want to go for Biden, not just because of logic, but he understands, you know, emotion as well. And 
yeah, that's what I have to say. <laughs> I want to I wanna back up. I don't know how much time you have in these podcasts, um, but I do want to say that I'm so sorry that you went through what you did mm -hmm. um, when you were younger. No one, no one, not a single person deserves that. And I think mm -hmm. that um, you are so strong for even bringing that up and talking about it. So I just wanted to let you know that I'm really grateful that you even trusted me to say that to me to know that you went through that so i'm um i'm so sorry that you went through that mm -hmm. and i'm and to see that you're the positive person that you are today mm -hmm. yeah with going through what you went through like when you told me that i started to tear up because like i couldn't you are just so lovely you have no idea like I'm crying and I don't know I'm just I'm crying because like you are so kind-hearted and like for you to go through what you did and yeah. still have that loving soul mm -hmm. is so we 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 hope that people don't have to go through that to be this mm -hmm. but we need more people like you in this world yeah we so need obviously I, need more people like you and more people like you know like um obviously like joe and you know Eric and everyone else and i just feel that once this election has finished i hope the right person is picked and <laughs> um we can actually go forward and actually progress as a proper not just a nation but as a collective and then go forward and actually bring back a bit of positivity and kind of at least extinguish a little bit of this division negativity out of america because it's really personally it's really like ugly to see and it actually just it, it sorry um it upsets upsets me to see that that is you know happening yeah because so many rights are being taken away from so many different individuals women's rights um mm. black individuals um trans even like people who are you know transgender um one of the most important people in my life is actually trans actually they are the most important important person in my life mm. and when these things go into place, my heart just breaks because I know that this person is completely just heartbroken to see that their rights are going to be stripped away little by little as this president continues to do it. It's just unbelievable. The one thing that I just can't get into my head because I've done research on this um, is how, if someone wants to serve the country that you are living in, how are you to restrict them? And I, and I did the research to see the funds needed if a trans person was to go into the military and it's 0.03% of the military funds. But let me tell you, that they spend 8% of the military funds on Viagra for, what? yes, I'm not kidding. Like, this is literal, I, I've d I had to do a um, communications like report on it. So I yeah. had to do actual research that is completely true. Unbelievable. Like they spend more money on Viagra than having a trans individual serve our country. And that's with like the medical oh, care and everything. So obviously, and the, it, it is expensive mm. um, for hormones, for the hormone. I'm sorry. I can't speak. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's fine. For the You're hormones, doing good. You're doing good. Um, for the hormones, um, because I've, I've seen the bills, um, but I, I can't imagine why anyone is spending that much money on Viagra in the military when you can have someone that's physically capable and able to serve in the military 
to do it for 0.03% of the funds. Makes yeah. absolutely no sense. Uh, so I kind of agree with you on that because that, uh, when you told me that stat, I was like, what? That's because it's really freaky. Maybe it's 0.8% or because I know it was like something just so much bigger than 0.03. Like just so much bigger than that. Plus there are, you know, there are, there are like physical people that you can train up even to go into the military. I mean, it can't be that tricky. It's just, it's baffling why that much percent of the rest of it is being spent on you know, Viagra. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you really look it up, I swear by it. it it's, it's such a weird percentage. I just, I'm not sure if I have like the complete numbers correct, but it is, it is a much bigger percentage. Um, so Trump's excuse for it was that one, you don't know if your hormones will deter your mind and your body. And then number two, the expenses of the hormones to obviously transition. Um, although, let me just say, like, whole, you don't need hormones to be trans, by the way. Like, I just want to add that in, too. You don't need to be taking any medication to be trans. Like, you are valid regardless of what hormones you're taking. But let me go back to what I was saying. Um, um but he said it was the money being put into it and that he didn't really, he, does, he doesn't think that trans people who are on hormones are physically capable of doing it because it messes with your body so much and your mind so much because it can um, cause you to be more emotional or a little more angry, which I, I, I've also, again, I've seen. But um, mm. psychologically on the studies, there's absolutely nothing that hormones can do to make you physically incapable of serving in the military. Um, and that's a, a real psychological study that has been made. And um, so it was just him being very transphobic. And that was, that was the purpose of it all. He didn't want trans people in there, but he did say, well, if you are, you've already transitioned and you aren't starting hormones while you're in the military or you haven't started hormones at all and you don't plan to start hormones then you can join or you can join after you've been on hormones for a long time i believe is what it was but you couldn't go in and then start the hormones i it was what it was um i I, I think I have to go back and like refresh my mind because it's been about two years since I've done this research paper mm -hmm. um, and I haven't looked it up since but it, it was something really weird where he just didn't want them to have to pay for the medications or them having to go through the beginning process of starting the hormones. Mm, it's Yeah, so it's really, really odd. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's just... <laughs> oh, just that's, no, that's, that's just like, I'm surprised and just baffled why you'd spend that much percent on you know, Viagra and you'd percent spend like 0.3% on something else. And as you said, you know, it doesn't affect how someone is, do you know? Right. Everyone, right. everyone has their right to be whatever they want to be, you know, you can, you know, you can be like a young boy being like Batman or something, or you can be, you know, you can be trans, you can, you can literally be anything. So it, it doesn't matter. The future yeah. opportunities are endless. Um, I, I, I'm so sorry. No, no, it's fine. You go, go for it. Um, I think that that's what we're all fighting for is for people to essentially be everything that they are. Mm. Um, for those who are non-binary, they also deserve to be accepted and respected. Um, that's, I'm not, I'm not too educated on those who are non-binary and I am going to be doing more research because my best friend is actually not out, but will be coming out. I'm not going to obviously okay. give any names, but um, yeah. they are so amazing and I want to educate myself more um obviously 
from now, even me being uneducated, I'm always going to respect anybody and their pronouns and love anybody for whoever they are. I just want to educate myself a little more. Um, but I feel like non-binary is at least a little new to me. So I imagine maybe it's new to a lot of other people. Um, mm. It's new to the aspect like I didn't really know what non-binary was um, seven years ago, I guess I would say. That's what I mean by new. Um, so I think that a lot of older people are going to have a hard time understanding that. Um, I was trying to talk to my grandpa about it the other day and he was like, that's stupid. And I was like, mm, of <laughs> course I'm trying. I'm just trying to like, he has his own mindset. I can't change it. He does whatever he needs to do. And I, if I argue with him, he'll start yelling. So oh. it, it, or he has that monotone voice. He has that white male voice that he, if he just speaks a little louder and he talks over you, he wins the argument no matter, he could be saying something about the freaking Teletubbies and he wins. Because <laughs> and I'm so Listen. serious about it because he, his voice, he'll just raise it a little more and he'll talk Listen. over you. And that's just, so I just, every time he says something that is against everything that I believe in, I'm just, I give up. I just, I give up because there's no changing it. He, no offense, but he's literally like Trump. When I listen to my grandfather speak, yeah, he sounds just like Trump. So that's what I, that's what I mean. I just, you can't put any reason into it because he'll always argue back. You, no matter, like I just watched that 60 minute interview last night because I yeah, just wanted to same, Trump yeah. this day. And go ahead, I'm so sorry. But yeah, no, I get, I get what you mean. I guess like, I guess you can't really like change the person within like, you know, your, you know, your, your grandfather, you know. I guess they'll have their own views. And obviously like, I'm with you, I'm with you like your views and against everything that's like transphobic and homophobic, but you can't really change the person, unfortunately. And that's right. what it is, I guess. Um, right. Um, I think that that's, he, so my significant other is, um, is trans. Mm. So he, um, my grandfather didn't really believe in it prior. He got into an argument with me over military, like the military stuff with trans people. And of course I'm angry and it turned into a big thing. But then my grandpa was like, my grandpa's also a therapist. So the fact that like he was against all of that made no sense to me. So um, my grandpa was like, hey, can I steal your boyfriend and kind of do an interview so I can understand his mind? I want to know. And he had all good intentions. He was trying to educate himself fully on the topic as a way to like show me that he is trying. And you know what? Hunter was like, okay, let's, let's do it. Hunter did it and my grandpa came back upstairs and he was like, that is, he, he is all man everywhere in the brain. And he was under like in the brain. He was like, that is, that is a man. He has absolutely no feminine features at all. When he's speaking to me, that is all man is what he was saying. And I, mm. I, I loved hearing that from him due to him being so against it. And now he defends trans people all of the time. And it's because he's grown such a love for my boyfriend and such a respect for my boyfriend. And that means everything. But not everybody is going to have the opportunity to be exposed to that. So these yeah. people who are very transphobic are always going to be transphobic because they're not exposed to it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If my grand, if I never started dating my boyfriend, I don't know if he would have ever changed his views. Mm -hmm. Um, because he wasn't exposed to it, and he also didn't see that. It's not about me when I say this, but the pain that I felt knowing that my boyfriend was discriminated against all of the time, and it was the pain that I felt from him feeling pain not because like I'm necessarily being affected but because my best friend in the entire world is hurting mm. so of mm. course that hurts me um and that's why I fight so hard because that and my best friend being bi non-binary and just in I just being a person that knows other people are going through 
discrimination and hatred. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's so crazy because one of the things that is the biggest problem that I think most Republicans have is these things don't affect them, so they don't care. Yeah. And if I lived with that mindset, I guess trans, like if the trans situation doesn't affect me personally, like me, but it affects my boyfriend. So I will fight. Whereas I am not a black person and I understand the privilege that I have, but yeah. I'm going to fight because many thousands of black people are getting killed by the policemen, the people mm -hmm. that are supposed to protect them. And if I, the point is, is just because it's not happening to you doesn't mean it's not happening. And that people tend to cl literally shut their eyes and close their ears because they don't want to hear it because it doesn't affect them. If And that's what we're talking about with privilege. And I understand my privilege that I have, and I will always, always fight for what is right, no matter mm -hmm. what, I don't care what happens to me in the process because mm. i think i i i can't i can't just because it's not happening to me doesn't mean it's not mm. hurting other and people I can't, I can't i can't yeah and i kind of agree with you on that one because um first of all i have a lot of trans friends as well so i usually tend to sometimes i don't write posts publicly but I, sometimes i tend to just like you know, speak to them and attend to, because I'm educating myself more, self more and more on, you know, people who are fighting transgender rights and finding out about the whole topic um, a lot, because I I know a, a lot about it, but there are some bits that I just don't know about it. So it kind of affects me. And the the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, which has been a huge movement, right. um, people over here have been saying, it's an American issue. I'm like, nope. Not just an American issue; it's a, it's like a worldwide issue uh, because that sort of police brutality. Uh, people in the UK, uh, a lot of white like supremacists, especially, tend to say that it's an American issue when there's a lot of brutality that does happen here. It's just yeah. not spoken about. And then there's some there's been, even been protests in Australia as well and other places. So it's like. It's not just like these issues are just like, you know, f born in one country, they're born everywhere. It's like a, a worldwide issue, in other words. And what's, I, I guess, when I say cool, I don't mean cool, like this shouldn't be, ha th this stuff shouldn't be happening. We shouldn't mm. have to protest to protect black lives. We shouldn't, we yeah. should automatically know we have to protect black lives. Mm. But, but the fact that this is happening in America and it's, it's exploding so much to where you're at and it's shining light to the brutality that's going on in your country is, uh, again, like when I say great, I don't mean great that this is happening. I mean, it's great to know that it's shining light elsewhere as well. Because um, mm. again, it shouldn't be happening at all. Like, there's yeah. no reason why we're not protecting black mm. life in any way shape or form it's unbelievable that this yeah. is even a conversation in 2020 like yeah what, the, what the heck the crazy stuff's happening in like 2020 and yeah. i think yeah that's pretty much that and i think now you know everyone's all combined together i actually wanted to talk to you about um now something else which is uh something completely different. So, as you know, you run a fitness motivation page. Yay. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> um, so, first of all, I really like that page because uh, I um, have been, I'm, naturally I'm quite, I'm quite slim, so I don't really like, need to burn a lot of stuff. Okay. But I've noticed there's this been this crease line above my stomach and I'm like if Mariah can do it so can I so I started following your tips and stuff like that and just started like you know exercising and just seeing how you've transformed has been like amazing and I think 
now um, is like a great time getting fit because you see all these people like showing how they're losing you know, weight, making these incredible transformations. I think it's great to, you know, uh, promote body awareness and that everybody is perfect, don't you think? Oh, yes. Um, I think that a lot, what social media does to people is the people who are in the limelight are those who have such a perfect body and although some of those bodies are worked for some of them are also paid for if that makes any sense and so this is an unrealistic expectation for those who don't have the money to be able to have those modifications to their body and um i think it's so important that people are to see the realistic side of what weight loss is and the realistic side of um, just bodies that are very similar to the normal type of person that doesn't have all of the money in the world. And um, I think I'm absolutely not anywhere where I would like to be. I still want to lose, I would even say about a hundred pounds, maybe 90 ish. I still, I'm still working on where I want to be. Um, And I, but I think that it's so important for me also to realize that I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm never, I'm never going to be perfect. And it's just, I'm just so, I think that a lot of people need to see that the perf, there is no perfect body, I guess. Yeah, Um, because I kind of agree with you because, uh, you know, all bodies come in all different shapes and sizes. And I don't think like to have like the perfect body, because you look at like, you know, you know, the Kardashians and the Jenners and you know, those sort of like standards were just like, you know, as you said, like uh, paid for, but obviously, you know, they have professionals who they work with to maintain that shape. And they actually do have the money to, you know, afford that. And a lot of people don't. So I think since so spending jealousy, you should just focus on yourself and how perfect your body is. And it's very important to love yourself as well, uh, because I think everybody is great. You're not going to achieve like, you're not going to have like amazing, you know, curves and have like this super natural athletic fit, you know, uh, body. You'd be like, oh, look, I'm going to look like this or look like this unrealistic person because it just, you won't be able to afford it and it just, you know, isn't feasible. So I guess just loving yourself and, you know, just being within your own element is yeah. the best thing. And I wanted to ask you, is there any five tips that you have um, in order to get someone who wants to, you know, you know, get active or get fit again in terms of? Um, The first one I would say is modification. You don't have to take away all of the foods that you love. You want to eat because if, if you stop eating those foods all together, you're going to have a relapse and you're going to eat and eat and eat. And I'm a binge eater. I actually have to take medications to stop myself from binge eating. Um, so if I don't eat like small portions of the foods that I love, I'm going to eat a bunch of it. I feel like that's the first one. Number two, um, do it. Think about it in your head for your future health. Because the foods that you're putting in your body today are going to affect you later on. Um, If you're eating really healthy foods, your body's going to be in a good place years from now. But if you're eating really bad foods, you're going to, you're going to run into heart problems, uh, kidney problems, um, liver, whatever it may be. And that's kind of what starts to, you got to kind of remember that your body is affected by the foods that you're eating today and i think that that's that that's what i remind myself all of the time and Mm. i don't necessarily i i and another thing do not look at the scale and i know that's something a lot of people say the scale i have been the same weight for probably the past two months but i'm i see that i'm losing 
my like actual inches i don't mm. so that's my muscle that's coming in but i'm still i'm not losing actual weight there was another thing that i saw on TikTok is that you don't actually see full results until nine months later yeah after you start your journey so if you're looking for results within a day it, you know it's not going to happen it's just kind of something it, you have to go with the consistency and you're also allowed to have bad days you're allowed to have good days like i was telling you earlier how i have arthritis in my fingers so some days i i just i don't have it in me because my body is hurting so bad um and you're you're not a failure because you miss a few days to work out you just always step back in because you don't as long as you're from what i saw is as long as you're working out three to four days a week and you're doing at least a half hour you should you should be okay and you're enough sorry this is a long thing but your journey isn't going to be like the next person's journey i have to remind myself all of the time people are doing the same workout programs that i'm doing and they're losing 30 pounds within two months and i'm like what am i doing wrong i want to lose 30 pounds too mm -hmm. but the problem is is my journey is different i'm suffering with arthritis my body hurts all of the time they're not suffering with that my mm -hmm. journey is going to be different because my i'm i'm fatigued because of the the disease that i have and i'm tired and i'm i'm I have, I, I just know that my journey is going to be different from the next person's due to the things that are going on in my life. And if you're not losing weight so much quick, so quickly, like the next person, and it's because of the things that you're eating, take a step back and kind of realize what you need to do to fix it, but make sure not to cut out everything that you love just eat it in moderation because otherwise you're going to go back and you're going to lose it. And also know that it's not going to be just a diet. Like this needs to be a full lifestyle change, not just a, um, not just something where you're doing it for 30 days and you're done. That's not how this works. Mm. So it is a, it's a lifestyle change. Sorry, I am done. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just, great to see people even people like you just doing like what you can to you know not just to get active again but to be an inspiration to others and that is a very very good thing to do especially in this pandemic because i think a lot of people need that uh, motivation and i think even with a right diet as well like i think it's just important to eat uh fruit you know vegetables and yes. just to keep your body you know in shape like it's all right to have a little bit of a, you know junk food once in a while you know it's nothing bad without that you can have some takeaway <laughs> but i think it's also nice to keep that balance as well of healthy stuff to you know uh your uh pleasures if that's food pleasures i i don't know some uh, something like you i guess you get what i mean i'm, sure, yeah. I'm trying to say in the word but sometimes i tend to just like not say it instead of just saying it <laughs> so yeah oh. um i think the the last thing is so obviously we're both fans of selena so this was gonna happen at one point because i've always wanted to talk about this um so first of all what actually made you a fan of um selena it started, I was always, when I was little, I was always on YouTube. I was maybe eight or nine, maybe? I don't remember, it was 2007, so then. Yeah, I would be, I was about 10 or 11. So I was always on YouTube and I remember going on Demi, Selena, Miley, and it was Miley and Mandy. So them, them three all had their own YouTube channels and then I would see that Miley and Demi always collab no, not Miley and Demi, Selena and Demi collab. And they just all became my idols. And then um, for some reason, I got mad at Selena because she was feuding with Miley on Hannah Montana. <laughs> it was stupid. <laughs> and I was, because Miley came out first. So of course I loved Miley first. And then of course, um, 
there was that like grudge that I had against her because she stole Mick Jonas from Miley as if that even mattered to me. <laughs> yeah. or, um, oh, oh. I obviously I had bought Selena's first album mm. and then I think my first like my full love came to her when Round and Round came out but I initially I again I owned the first album once the first day it came out I um, kiss and tell I have always loved Selena and I um, but I think that when I got into the fandom it was round and round once yeah once round and round came out and then I made a Miley and no Selena and Demi fan page on Twitter and that's what started it Oh, nice. Yes. 2008? Yes. It was a wow. long time. Wow. Yeah. That's 12, damn, 12 year anniversary. Yes. 12 year anniversary. So your your 20 year anniversary is in, oh, it's 2028. <laughs> uh, to think that like I've been a fan of hers since damn. 2028. Wow. I mean, not since 2028, but for 20 years in 2028. Wow. That's ages. That is cool. That is quite cool. <laughs> um, I was, so I actually started becoming a fan. When did I start fan? I'm not quite sure, but I think it's, it's not when she was on Barney because actually when I was small, I used to watch Barney quite a lot. Um, <laughs> I used to even dance to her at some point. <laughs> um, and I know it was like, a, it was Selena and it was Demi, I think. Demi? Demi Lovato on Barney? Mm-hmm. And yeah. basically, I just used to watch that show a lot, but I don't think, it was just because I just liked the show. But I think it truly happened when, I think Selena came on Wizards, and basically Wizards and Waverly Place. And that's when it all happened because she was like, you know, that just that cool teenager. And she was just such a lovely person to, you know, be around her energy was really cool as well. And she's, she's quite goofy, but I kind of like that. <laughs> And I think the first ever album, I, I listened to, um, uh, to her first album, but I, but I think the first ever album that I really fell in love with was, uh, so it was Selena Gomez and the Scene, their first album which came out, uh, I think, was it, was it 2012, 2013? Um... Kiss and Tell came out, I think, in 2009 or 2008, which was the first Selena Gomez in the scene. Yeah. Um, the second one was A Year Without Rain, and then the third one was We Own the Night. No. Is We Own the Night? Well, let me make sure. I always get the two mixed up, so please bear with me. Do We Own yeah. the Night or... Because um... it was either Kiss and Tell or We Own the Night. That's... I was one of those two. That oh, I sorry. Thinking. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> Adele just came on. Okay, hold on. Oh, bless. <laughs> I was speaking of Adele. Did you see her uh, weight loss transformation? Like, damn. I was like, yes. whoa. Like, Absolutely. when she, she like lost a lot of weight, I was like, whoa, Adele, this is a big transformation. And I was like, really happy because Adele is just Adele. No words. <laughs> you don't need to even describe it it's, she is truly amazing though but i was like amazing um your 2011 album is um the selena gomez in the scene and it's when the sun goes down i always it's we on the night tour yeah for that album and that's what always confused me um but when the sun yeah. goes down is the album yeah yeah that album uh, when the sun goes down that was just like i think that was the first album that i listened to but i think the first album I uh, like officially bought wasn't because I was young and I was like poor so I didn't have a lot of money um right. so I think the first album was uh Revival I think I bought Revival um as the first uh, album uh that came out because I kind of liked a lot of the songs on there especially like um uh Kim McKinnis was one of them that was one and then there was um oh my god oh no I should know this as well Oh, that's it. Um, uh, good for you as well. That was another one as well. And there was one more. Uh, you see, some of these uh, slow down, that's it. And there was just like... on um, Stars Dance. Oh, I always get those two mixed up and I don't know why. 
she is just like me with me on the night and when the sun goes down so it's fine <laughs> so i think You're that was fine. the first i know right that was the first album that i bought and then we went i think i went to a show in 20 it was either in 2016 or 2017 it was, i'm not sure but around that time when she 20- was touring sorry i yes. just no i'm sorry <laughs> Yeah, no. Did you say 2016? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah. I went on, like, I went to see her live. Um, unfortunately, like, I didn't have many friends back then, so I went alone. So I was like, okay, I'm just going alone and find out. So I was just vibing alone. And yeah, it, it was an amazing night, to be honest. Um, I kind of loved it. And I think after that, obviously, there was, like, this is the great thing about Selena as well, because obviously she had like, you know, obviously like her, her own like personal problems and then she went into her rehab. Um, and I think this is where, you know, it really helped her in the sense of recovery. And that's what um, people with mental health um, could need as well, like just help with understanding their emotions and, you know, understand what they're going through. And the help with recovery and that's when obviously the next album came out which was rare um which i think is probably her best album that she has ever created by i think a long way what about you i can say that you're like mm, i don't know about that row hit no there was a there's a fight on stan twitter all the time about whether revival or rare is better mm. i personally yeah. think there is not a single bad song on rare revival on the other hand i don't like rise um i think that rise is kind of boring um i'll probably get hate <laughs> for it but it's fine but um revival i'm not really a big fan of kill em with kindness oh Just, interesting don't yeah don't kill me it's fine i won't i won't <laughs> no objections <laughs> <laughs> But Revival also has my favorites, and Rare doesn't necessarily have my favorites, like, by her on it. So, um, Mm, I get it, but I think Rare also doesn't have a single bad song, so I'm really just in the middle. I think that they're both really good albums. Yeah. Um, But Lose You to Love Me, I don't think anything could ever top it, but I I do agree where I think Rare is her best sounding album yeah. i think that the revival era was so much better mm. because obviously there was a tour there was so totally. much more put into it yeah. there was actual promotion a, there was mm. um mm. i don't know i just i really i love that era and i think it's more sentimental to mm. me because i obviously mm. met her a million times on that tour and um it was just I, I think revival era is amazing to me. Yeah, and I kind of, I kind of get that because with you know with the vibes that came with it and you know, meeting Selena and stuff like that, I just think um, revival. I don't really have anything to say about revival. I think revival was really good as well, but I think for me personally, rare is more like more sen- more personal and sentimental in the way that some of the tracks have been like because you've always got some personal tracks about you know uh relationships and that kind of reminds me of my fighting relationships with my family you know there's some of my friends and then there are some boppy songs as well some cool little dance tracks i think it's got a little bit of everything and it's 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 unfortunate it's actually happened in a year where there's pandemic yeah because you know there would have been like a lot because i think this album's really it's not you know it's not like loud or anything boppy it's just very it's smooth but it's more i take a lot of inspiration in it in the way that it's shaped my life for you know the better obviously i liked revival um but this one was just it was something different it it spoke something different to me if that makes sense and that's awesome i love that because i love that you're having that feeling with her her music I think that that's the point of her releasing these albums is because she wants you to feel these emotions and feel the positivity mm. and um, kind of see what she's going through and then see if it helps you with what you're going through. And I think that that's her entire heart and soul in that, into in putting out any music. 
So I I like that. Yeah. I think that's just what the amazing whole thing about it is as well. It's just I'll just do the heart sign, but yeah. Um what else? I think with you know, Selena's just been like a big uh inspiration to me in not just a music sense but watching her on tv especially this year this year has been been a lot of stuff happening with films like this is the year and stuff like that uh obviously with a rare on the cover of allure as well and yeah i think she and especially the stuff that she's been doing with voting as well because uh today um i think i don't know if you know about it but to, I'm pretty sure you do anyways, but today um, she did an interview with Kamala Harris. Yep, you know, I thought I thought you would have known anyways. Um, so she did an interview with Kamala Harris and has been doing a lot of uh, interviews regarding voting and regarding the presidential election and mentioning that she's voting for like for the actual first time uh, because when she was younger, she wasn't educated about all this stuff that was like happening within the voting system. So to see all this happening and advocate for mental health really speaks to me because there was one time that I nearly actually committed suicide in 2017 um, because I was struggling like uh, really badly. So I was, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm getting a bit, a bit sentimental because uh, this happened three years ago and without her music and the advocacy in mental health and without you know the right people being there there would be no row hit <laughs> and you know it it was a pretty much savior and that is kind of why kind of it's kind of the reason why i like selena gomez in the first place i just think she's a big big inspiration and the world needs more of selena in that sense i'm so happy that you are here and i'm so happy that you've made it out and I know that it's so hard um because I've been in your position too the first time I met Selena so I have my love yourself first tattoo on my wrist because oh. I yes um because I used to hurt myself obviously and on this wrist um mm. but when I met Selena for the first time I gave her my blades because I was making her that promise that I wasn't going to hurt myself anymore. And she hugged me so tight and it was one of the most amazing things. And I promised her I wouldn't do it again. And I, I really truly meant it. And so when I talked to her, she called, it was like this random phone call thing, but she mm. called me and I was so proud to tell her that I had hit, 10 a year a year clean when she called me and the sound in her voice when she told me that she was so proud of me that i was still i was doing so well and that i was strong that meant the entire world to me and so the fact that she's also made that impact on you means the entire world to me because she mm. is so everything she stands for everything just the amount of love she has for people and the amount of effort she's putting into this mental health, um, these men the mental health council that's involved in Rare Beauty mm -hmm. means everything. And I, I'm so glad that she was that person for you. And I'm so mm -hmm. glad that you are here and you are yeah. alive. I'm glad that mm -hmm. you're, you're okay. And yeah. I, also, um, I, I'm sorry. Oh no, no, it's fine. Um, I'm. I just want to say I'm. Glad, I'm actually happy that you're here as well because I think you're. Uh, in, you're you're pretty inspirational, and I think there's a lot of things that. Uh, you're like really good. At, like really kind. You're really positive. Uh, you know, you. I don't know how to describe it, but those are some of the words. That, that that if someone was to tell me, what does Mariah sound like? I'm like, this is what Mariah is in a, in a couple of words. Um, yeah. <laughs> yep. And um, I think, as you mentioned, with the mental health fund that they're doing for um, Rare Beauty, I think they're doing with it with um, NAA, 
I am or something like that. Um, so, or they're doing it with a charitable organization, the yeah. mental health campaign. And I think the good thing about it is, is that they're, you know, just promoting it because a lot of people this year have suffered from uh, mental health and, you know, it's just suffered from massive, massive struggles. So I was actually doing, I, I, got, I got a free bag from Rare Beauty because I attended this event. So I just checked out with it, I mean, right before you and I got on here. And one of the things that it asks you is if you would like to make a donation to the Rare Beauty Mental Health Council. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it's called. I just know that they're together with the council. They have multiple people involved. But the fact that they have that as a way to check out and you get to change the pricing, um, that's also going to add on to the additional one percent that they're giving for each sale for rare beauty which is amazing so the fact that they are able to do that and um give give more because their goal was to do 10 i mean 100 million dollars right yes. or yeah it was a hundred million dollars yeah. to but within the next 10 years but i do think that they're going to achieve that way way quicker yeah, because cool. this brand is already easily becoming one of the more respected yes. brands yeah and one of the more so, uh, yeah yeah one of the more most important brands um i'm gonna have to just quick things up only because my laptop is going to crash and i'll be like oh no so um yeah i mean rare beauty is just amazing in all that sort of sense and you know, they are becoming, I think they will, they will be one of the best beauty brands you'll ever see in a very long time. And the last thing I'm going to ask you before we actually head off is, what music do you like? It's just a random question. Um, I like, I, I'm a big pop person. So anything Ariana, um, Selena, yeah. Taylor. Um, and then I also, I'm, I like, I love 21 Pilots and I love, I don't, do you, yes. Yeah, dude, I've got a poster. I'll send you a photo, but I've actually got a poster of Selena Pump Pilots. So I've got a shirt and everything, and I've got yes. um, some Selena merch coming as well in November, I think. So, send yeah. um, I'll yeah. send you my phone number. You have an iPhone, right? I have some, no? okay. Then I'll we'll figure something out because I just yeah, suck we'll at something. looking at any any notifications. Yeah, but... just send, send me your you know details or whatever, and I'll. Uh, Try, yeah. Okay. I have some. Stuff. No. Okay, then I'll we'll figure something out because I just yeah, suck we'll at looking at any any notifications yeah just send, send me your you know details or whatever and i'll try yeah okay um and then all do you know who all time low is oh yeah <laughs> yeah all time low is my favorite band of all time um yeah and then yeah i would say that's about it um camila yeah. i Bale. but i'm really, yes i'm into the pop people um mm. But yeah, yeah, I think 21 That's Pilots cool. and All Time are my two favorite bands. I'm so oh. sorry. I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's fine. Um, we're going to cut it there now. Um, everyone who's listening, thank you so much for listening. Um, mm -hmm. Mariah, it was very nice to have you on here. Um, and yeah, we will hopefully see you guys later. Make sure to check out uh, Mariah's motivation page. And yeah, it was nice talking to you. Um, uh, I've, mm. I've got to go now. Well, I think we've both got to go. I think you're going to go yeah. back, back to doing what you're doing and I'm just going to do what I need to do. So yeah, thank you, Mariah. You've been an amazing person. I truly love what you're doing. And see you thank later. You. I'll see you soon. I'll talk to you soon. See you soon. All right.
Hey Dylan, so first of all, have you voted in this general election? I indeed have voted in the US general election. Um, it's actually my first year voting because I wasn't of age the first general election. Um, yeah, I voted on Monday, October 26th, and it was my first year. How important is it that people vote in this election? I think it's super, super, super important to vote, especially nowadays, because one, if you're eligible to vote, you literally have a voice and you need to stand up for what you believe in. And even if voting isn't what you believe in, it's literally a power and a right that you have. And if you're not using that right or that power, you're being silly. And two, literally your future is literally in the hands of voting. Like you want to be able to not like predict your future, but you want to know that your future is in good hands. So I think it's super, super important to vote for the right thing. And this US general election is definitely something that we need to vote for. Personally, how important is the US general election important to you right now? Personally, to me, this US general election is so, so important because literally the fate of our future is in our hands and our generation, Generation Z or whatever, I don't know, our younger generation literally is what is going to define our future. And it's not literally, it's not just me, it's not just one individual, it is thousands, maybe even millions of people who have the right to vote and who literally have the right to decide our future. So it is so, 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 so important that people use their voice and they do what is right. And that is voting. So you love photography. Um, why are you so passionate about photography? One thing that made me get into photography, honestly, I have always been so attracted to cameras and so interested in what cameras like do other than just take pictures. Um, but it honestly started for me in high school, my sophomore year of high school, I joined yearbook and I just loved taking photos of like sports and just like people in general. And not only that, but one of my friends or he's not my friend now, but I had a friend who I was super close to and he was actually an aspiring photographer as well. And just seeing him take photos honestly just inspired me to start taking photos too because it's something that I really, really love to do. And I saw that he had fun with it and I knew that I could have fun with it too. So yeah. Are there any photos that you like taking? My favorite type of photos that I love to take is concert photography. I love, love, love concert photography, but my, I think my strength in taking photos is just portraits, human portraits. That's a lot of what I post on my photography Instagram. And it's, like I said, it's just one of my huge, huge strengths. And I think later on when I become more like prominent and more in into photography like i'm into it now but i think when it comes later on i really 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 want to get into concert photography that's one thing that i absolutely would love to do but i my strength is in human portraits so so what was that first moment that made you a fan of Selena Gomez? 
what made me a fan of Selena is honestly just watching Wizards of Waverly Place. I know that sounds really cheesy, but my older brother, he actually started watching it before I did. And he would actually see her music videos pop up on Disney Channel. And one day he was just watching Wizards and like right after one of the first things during the commercial was her music video naturally or falling down. I don't know. It was one of them. And I was listening to it and I was honestly just hooked with her music. And I watched the TV show and I ended up watching it and listening to her music more than my brother did. So I'd say I wouldn't say it's because of my brother because I watched Disney Channel pretty often myself, but I think I really started becoming a fan because I watched my brother watch her and listen to her. So it was just something that I stuck with and I can't even, I can't even say how thankful I am because she's such a huge, huge, huge part of my life now. Has there been any one album that's been your favorite out of all the albums that Selena Gomez has produced? My favorite album of Selena's is honestly A Year Without Rain. Um, that's one of the first albums that I remember listening to being a little kid. Obviously, I've listened to all of them. They're all great. I love you so much, Selena. But my honestly, my favorite album is A Year Without Rain because there's just like the production the lyrics it's just, it just helps me remember the time in my life where i was really getting into her music and was really getting into her tv show and it just helps me feel like it just helps give me that feeling of being a child honestly that sounds kind of silly but it's just it was just my the happiest time of my life and i don't think there will ever be anything that reminds me of that point in my childhood other than the A Year Without Rain album. So I honestly think it would be A Year Without Rain. Lastly, is there any music um, that you love? It doesn't have to be Selena Gomez, it can be literally anything, and why? Music that I really, really love, it kind of sounds sad now that I think about it, but a lot of the music I listen to now is just sad music. Um, it's not that I'm like sad myself. I am actually in a good point in my life right now, but just like the overall vibes and like just feeling that personal with the artist who wrote the music is just one of my favorite things to do and it's not only like sad music but i'm really getting into a lot of alternative music and just a lot of ballads i love acoustic songs and i love about ba acoustic ballads same thing i really love that type of genre if you should say but not only that, I'm also really, really into Billie Eilish and Shawn Mendes and Halsey. So yeah.